So just as a caveat, um, we're implementing something called the Affordable Care Act that you may have heard about, the health reform bill. I have not slept uh, for weeks. I'm also under the weather. So if I'm actually not coherent at any point in the next five, 10 minutes, just raise your hand and say, please repeat with clarity this time. So I'm Todd Park. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, actually, I'm not a traditional CTO, because uh, if I actually were a traditional CTO role, I probably wouldn't have taken the job. The job was actually created by the Obama administration last summer. And it's to basically be an internal entrepreneur in residence, a change agent. Uh, that has no line responsibility and that works with the leadership of HHS and how to harness the power of data, technology, and innovation to improve the health of the country. I have no government experience whatsoever. I'm a private sector entrepreneur, uh, but I felt like this was something that I could do to be helpful, and so I moved my family from California last August and started going. Uh, one of the things we've been working on about which I'm most passionate is open government. And I think this, this crew obviously knows what open government is. <laughs> Under the auspices of open government, uh, one of the things that's been most important at HHS in terms of our open gov game plan is something I'm calling data liberacion, uh, the whole notion of how open data uh, can be harnessed to improve the health of the country. Uh, so I'd like to talk a little bit about that. Um, is everyone in the room familiar with kind of the, the notion of what HHS does? So you all know that it, it spends $900 billion every year. It encompasses Medicare, Medicaid, NIH, FDA, CDC, so on and so forth. I actually didn't have a clue about the scope and breadth of HHS before I joined it. And like all newcomers, I was stunned by not just the scope and breadth of the operation, but by the scope and breadth and power of the data that's sitting in the vaults at HHS, in the vaults of Medicare and FDA and CDC, data which, if unleashed, could, I think, do wonders uh, to bring new insight, uh, trigger new products and services, lead to actions that could improve the health of the country in significant and dramatic ways. So as a core part of our open government plan, which we published uh, as part of the open government directive of the president uh, in April, and which is at our uh, OpenGov webpage at hhs.gov slash open, we've actually embarked upon the most ambitious data liberation campaign in the history of HHS, not just for liberation's sake, uh, but because we believe it to be a primary means through which we can actually help improve the health of the country. And as one example of that, I'd like to talk about a specific data liberation initiative called the Community Health Data Initiative. Uh, actually, I have a challenge I'd like to issue to the audience, anyone who's watching. If you can come up with a cooler name for it than Community Health Data Initiative, I will actually buy you, within government regs, a fruit basket from Polynesia. But I need a cooler name for it than CHDI, but right now it's CHDI. And what CHDI is is very simply a public-private collaboration that seeks to help uh, uh, raise awareness among Americans of community health performance and to help spark action to improve it. So let me actually just tell you the story of how it came to be, because I think how it came to be is as important as what it's actually seeking to do. It's actually something that originated straight out of the uh, Tim O'Reilly playbook, something we've been working with him on, uh, and actually adheres to, turns out, all the central tenets of government as platform and open data. Uh, what happened is, is actually we pulled together, just this past March, a meeting of about 40, 45 people at the Institute of Medicine. Uh, half of them were people like Ed Sondek, who's forgotten more about healthcare uh, in the last five minutes than I'll ever learn the rest of my life. Just super deep healthcare and health data experts. The other half were people like uh, Tim O'Reilly and Anil Dash, uh, you know, folks who actually had never been to a public health meeting in their lives, right? But are masters, are ninjutsu princes at how you take data and change people's lives with it. So we had the Tim O'Reilly's and the Ed Sondek's get together for several hours, and we said, look, you know, is there something to the data that we've got? You know, is this community health data that's sitting in HHS's vaults useful? Can it actually be helpful to improve health? And over the course of several hours, they concluded resoundingly yes, and they came up with 20-odd ideas of apps and products you could build using our existing data that would be helpful this year in terms of helping to move the needle on health. That would help raise awareness of community health, that actually help spark action to improve it and inform action to improve it. Then even more impressively, this group of people volunteered to start building <laughs> a bunch of them and then roped in more people to build stuff. We actually just slapped together an interim web page for CHDI, put a bunch of data sets up there uh, that could be downloadable and pointed people at it. And over the course of the next uh, basically 90 days, people built over a dozen new or improved applications that leverage HHS's community health data, data like smoking rates, obesity rates, uh, access to you know, uh, healthy food, uh, liquor stores per 10,000 people, which turns out to be a meaningful indicator of, of health, uh, a driver of health, took basically that data and produced super cool apps, super cool beta apps, 
um, that I'm actually not allowed to tell you about <laughs> because we're having another event uh, next week, uh, which actually is at the IOM, this time with 400 people, which will be webcast. If you're interested in seeing it, it's um, on uh, June 2nd. And if you go to the hhs.gov slash open uh, web page, you'll be able to just view a webcast of the plenary session of the meeting uh, right there online. Uh, but we're unveiling uh, a whole bunch of super cool apps that these innovators built in basically less than 90 days using our data, which, frankly, in my wildest dreams, <laughs> HHS could not have built. And that's the whole point, right? The whole point is that what HHS is doing is being a data platform. It's basically taking data that is very cool data that's in our vault that we've already paid literally billions of dollars to gather and putting it out there in a way that's machine readable and downloadable, easily accessible, and then actually saying to the world, what do you think? You know, and is this stuff actually cool and can you use it? Uh, and then actually dialing that insight back into the data that we put out there because honestly, the data that we put out there should be guided by the innovators who will use it uh, to, uh, to drive actual uh, cool product development and improvement. Um, so uh, we just put the data out there. A whole bunch of people built amazingly cool stuff with it. Um, and it's a very promising start. So we'll be unveiling these first apps uh, next Wednesday um, and then hopefully getting the people in the audience, the people online excited um, about doing even more with our data. And we'll also be talking about uh, an expanded array of data we'll be putting out in a HHS health data warehouse uh, in December 2010. Uh, that will expose the data as a web service and make it even easier uh, to actually stitch into super cool products and apps and spur even more innovation that can help improve health. Um, so that's really kind of the gist of CHDI. I find it incredibly inspiring because it speaks to me uh, of the spirit of Commonwealth uh, that I think is actually increasingly pervasive in the country. Uh, the recognizance that basically problems like how to transform health are so big there's that there's no one organization, no one group of people uh, you know, even an organization that spends $900 billion a year that could possibly really make a meaningful movement in it alone. Um, and I love the notion of CHDI as something that just kind of got started three months ago and has a ton of heat, has a ton of people who've come out of the woodwork to help to try to advance the public good, people in academia, people in for-profit businesses, technologists, healthcare people, uh, consumer people, government people, et cetera, banging together to actually build essentially an ecosystem of data suppliers and data utilizers that can actually get turbocharged and can catalyze a bunch of action uh, in terms of app development and use of apps um, that, that can improve health. And to me, you know, it, it just speaks volumes about what's possible um, if we actually adopt an O'Reilly-like platform <laughs> and say, look, we're all in this together. Uh, you know, government actually can do certain things well and can not really do other things that well, but there are other people who do, do those things incredibly well. And there are certain things like providing data that government has that government can do uniquely well. Um, and that we all are part of an ecosystem that can better society if we put our minds to it uh, and, and, and get going without a lot of fuss, without a lot to do. I mean, the CHDI, I mean, it's not a formally organized corporation. There's no board. There's no charter. You know, there's no email list even. I mean, it's just a bunch of people that got together and started to do stuff together and are making meaningful progress in a very short period of time. And so it gives me a lot of faith about what we can do in a Gov 2.0 era. And it's a model that's getting a ton of interest across the administration uh, and within HHS that we're going to seek to seek to replicate. Um, because if you really want to advance Gov 2.0, what I've learned is that no amount of theorizing or speechifying is going to help, right? What really helps is if you actually have something that you've done that's spectacular <laughs> and that makes everyone associated with it feel like a rock star, right? Then they go tell everyone else and, they, and other people say, I want to be a rock star too. Right? And they start go doing it. So, so to me, you know, it's a core part of our open gov strategy and our gov 2.0 strategy, HHS, to make CHDI a Rolling Stones concert circa 1975, whenever the Rolling Stones were cool. I don't remember. But, uh, and, and actually have that then cause people to then want to be the Rolling Stones right, and do this a lot. Uh, and that, to me, is how we're going to change the culture of HHS toward one of data liberation, toward one of open government, toward one of gov 2.0, because success begets success. Uh, and CHDI, um, thanks to a whole bunch of people, and not me, <laughs> I just put the data out there, you know, uh, is, is, is turning out to be bigger than I possibly imagined. Uh, so that's what I have to say. Was that reasonably coherent? Uh, okay, well, it was great to see you. Catch you later. <laughs>